Здравствуйте! Мы опять в студии, работаем над портретом. Я встала, потому что сидеть больше нет возможности, надо работать над деталями. И дедали требуют внимательной проработки. Легче работать стоя в скульптуре. У нас по-прежнему пластилин находится в горячей воде. Возможно, на этой стадии, чтобы получать такие мягкие волны волос, вам надо сделать очень горячую воду. Для этого можно закипятить чайник и вылить ваш таз. Моя вода такая горячая, что я использую стек, чтобы достать кусочек пластилина, но зато пластилин очень мягкий. На этой стадии мы начинаем добавлять про портретное сходство. Оказался каркас. Это не идеально, но мы это всегда сможем исправить на более поздних стадиях, например, в форме. Крутимся по часовой стрелке. Так, смотрим, смотрим, стоп.
крутимся по часовой стрелке, смотрим анфа, стоп. In China, portrait sculpture was less valued than painting portraits. The terracotta army, made for the first emperor's tomb around 210 BC, was the peak of naturalistic plasticity of sculpture in China. One thing worth noticing here is, like ancient Greek sculptures, the terracotta army was painted in color. It was not monochrome at all. Each portrait has its own individuality, if scrutinized closely and carefully. Even though the sublime scale and number of the army somehow overshadow the individuality of each single portrait, it is once more interesting to notice a standard perception, in this case of uniformity, that we may have about these sculptures that could be misleading. Пока глаз свежий, смотрим за большими формами, смотрим за объемами головы и над углами. Наша голова повторяет форму черепа. Смотрим, чтобы была хорошая наполненность.
мы работаем иглами, мы прорабатываем глаза, рот, нос, прорабатываем маленькие детали, добиваемся портретного сходства. с этим делать, потому что ее будет очень сложно формовать. Большие куски. Ну, нафига я сделала вот такую большую? Ну, по Мне, короче, не получается. Я хочу сесть на стул и смотреться в это все. Christine, um, let's talk about sensitivity. Let's talk mm -hmm. about, um, for example, as an artist myself, I was blamed very often to be crazy or overreacting or whatever. So people putting their judgment as you are on the stage. Yeah, but you see, hours. people have uh, an idea of a stereotype of an artist. So I think that's their problem. It's not uh, your problem or my problem as an artist. Because I see you create, uh, as many artists and myself included, in um, completely isolated 
space. So it's not your, with your family, with your partner, yeah. even you. It goes with the, the territory. So if you're an artist, you need a space. I don't know if you've read a book uh, by Virginia Woolf called Room of One's Own. Body, every artist needs a room of their own. You need your own space. And the other thing we were talking about is you need to be able to support your practice. So it, really everybody gets that support from, from different places, but you need not only emotional support when you're an artist, but you also need financial support. You know, I've done, you know, very respectable jobs like, you know, teaching and residencies and uh, all sorts of things to do with art. But I've also worked in shops and done, you know, all sorts of things. To survive. Just to, to survive. And but still you are recommending to our students to, um, to really take this prestigious... <laughs> in a way. <laughs> oh, to be an art... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wouldn't... I wouldn't definitely wouldn't change it for the world because it's uh, it's the most enriching experience that, that you can have you know you have the absolute freedom to do what you want I've been in those jobs where someone says well you have to be in at you know eight o'clock and you know do this and do that y you have the possibility to fail actually and you have <laughs> and your you, mm -hmm. and uh, but there, you know, you've got the freedom to do what you want, which is a huge uh, privilege, I think. Your first introduction, it wasn't from your parents. They are not your huge supporters in terms of no, being no. an artist and no, not at all. No, no. Uh, it comes from having the comfort, knowing it to yourself, knowing that you're curious about. For in my case, how the world works, you know, about the human condition. You're desperate to, exp for, in my case, again, to express that. I didn't know what medium I was going to use. I had to find my medium, which is wood. You have to be completely focused. You have to be prepared to work your arse off, basically. Um, it's very labour intensive what I do. You have to be, as I say, very focused. You look straight ahead. You don't look left. You don't look right. You just go for it, basically. But as I see your works, they all have a very bold statement. Probably it's your type of character as well. To go yes, straight. Yes, I want as to. Uh, I want to say something, and there's no point in uh, shilly shallying around. This is what I want to say, and I'm going to say it. As I say, it's very exciting because you don't really know where it's going. It's an investigation and it's an ongoing lifetime exploration of your ideas. And you've only got one life and uh, to be able to do that is, uh, is, is amazing. I think it takes a lot of um, self-confidence and you have to have feelings of self-esteem and you have to find that within yourself because no one else is going to give it to you. I knew that I was an artist, but I didn't know how to get there. So you have to find, you have to find your own way and everybody's going to be different. So I work with wood, you work with bronze, you know, whatever. People are going to have, you know, a different uh, language or language language, language. yeah or, different you know, language. for their practice yes let's look more through your works and we will talk more about your themes I guess that uh, looking back at all my figures they're probably all Amazons and the Amazons were uh, mythological warrior women described by a Greek writer called Herodotus in the 5th century BC. But actually, they, they were warrior women, and uh, they actually lived possibly in the Ukraine, because they've now discovered the graves of these women who were buried with their spears and their horses. How interesting. I didn't so, know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, it is fascinating. Very. And uh, 
So I like exploring this idea about, again, women's biology, uh, about warfare and who wages war. Normally it's men, but I'm talking as well about uh, violence and all these things coming together. So in my Amazons, I've got, uh, I've got women who are very biological creatures, so they menstruate, they give birth, you know, they're very connected to uh, the world around them with their animals. Um, but I think women, I'm not saying that women can't be aggressive, but it kind of overlaps, you know, so for example, 97% of homicides are male homicides by males against other males. Uh, but, you know, you can get some women who are aggressive. So the whole thing is kind of, it's very kind of charged. Uh, With nature, maybe, I mean, blood and violence. Yeah, nature is yeah, red in tooth and claw. Yeah, uh, the, the so nature doesn't have any mercy for us. Exactly. Well, nature is indifferent. <laughs> it's completely yeah. indifferent. So you could possibly say that all my female figures, because they're mostly female figures, because I'm talking about my own experience as a woman, as an artist, and I think that artists reflect the world around them. So Absolutely. that's the interesting thing about art and science, because scientists reflect the world, what's happening physically in the world. And I think artists do that as well. And I really like that idea of art and science meeting. Let's talk about more Christian art during our next lesson. And we will see more works and more themes in her art. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Svetlana.
If you are visiting Paris and interested in sculpture, the Musée Guimet is a unique place that would be a pity to miss, as it has a great collection of Buddhist sculptures. It shows various developments of Buddhist art, from naturalism through to expressionism. The glazed terracotta here demonstrates how advanced Buddhist art was compared with medieval Europe in terms of realistic representation. Я вообще в профессию пришла, потому что искала семью. Мне, мне, для меня в искусстве очень важно, что мы постоянно все тусуемся вместе, потому что мы едим, мы куда-то ездим, мы ездим смотреть, не знаю, там, Микеланджело большими компаниями, образно, да, то есть мне это дико нравится. 